this video is extremely important. And of course, remember that they're changing my voice. And I'm going to prove that both sides in this Dodger uh, Pride event um, controversy are wrong. Both sides are wrong. I'll start with um, Proverbs 17.10, so you all know that I'm right to do this. A rebuke impresses a discerning person more than a hundred lashes a fool. And also Proverbs 19.25, flog a mocker and the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke the discerning and they will gain knowledge. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about cultural appropriation. Everyone knows that Jesus was not white as a character in the story. And this is important here. Everyone knows this. You know, you go 2,000 years ago or so, the people in the area um, were basically colored people, okay? We know this for more than one reason. You know, there's, I've seen paintings of Jews from long ago with dark skin, okay? It gets a bit confusing, but we know that and even if you believe he had white skin, we know that he's not of European descent. So when we see this tall, Nordic, kind of English, Germanish uh, looking Jesus, we know that they're worshiping something else. For example, if you would have said, hey, that image of the devil is actually an image of Christ, then you you know, people would say, hey, what the heck are you doing? That's not right. That's not, that's not even close to Jesus. That's the devil. And so it is with colonialists, you know, colonists. The English were the main colonists. The Germans were some of the most prolific in terms of, you know, the, we'll say the Nazi party specifically. Some of the most prolific racists in human history. Okay? And they said, me, 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 me. We see over there in Israel. We see people with the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict say, me, 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 me. So not only did Christ not look like them. But they're saying, me, 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 me. Now, why you say, why do I bring this up? Because they're mocking God and I. The Catholics, the Protestants, the pride people, they're all mocking God. And they they worship Bel, who is a deity of confusion, right? His Greek equivalent is Zeus. His Egyptian equivalent is Set. They're all mocking. So why are they all gathered with these people? Okay? These people were obviously you know, from European patriarchal lines, right? And, you know, again, I'm part white, I'm not racist. But there's a difference between being a colonist and going somewhere and snatching up the women and then you have kids and they say, hi, we're from their patriarchal line. Now, you know, I'm not, you know, if you're from the patriarchal line, you're from the patriarchal line, okay? To some degree, that's neither here nor there. Your character is what matters. However, if you roll with the neo-colonial agenda, whether you're a controlled opposition or an obvious neo-colonial corporation, then you're continuing that rape, that theft, that murder, that satanic activity from the devil and the, the uh, colonists of old. Rome colonized and they crucified Christ with those who were in their suppressed Christ spirit um, who were from his, his group in the story of the Jews. Okay. You see, it is a story, first and foremost. When we're talking about the Bible, we are not talking about the Word of God. The Bible itself says that this book is not the Word of God. The Bible, in the Bible, says that this book is not the Word of God. It says it in 1 John, and it says it in 1 Corinthians 4.20, I believe, when it says the kingdom of heaven is not a matter of speech or mere talk or mere words on a paper. But it's a matter of power. In the beginning was the word. Before the Bible was written. So to say the Bible is the word of God. As if you need to read the Bible. Right? And it's, it's kind of semantics to some degree. Some degree it isn't. As if you need to read the Bible to understand God. Blasphemy to the extreme. The Bible is a story compiled by oppressors. That's there to confound the word of God. Well, how do we know this? Well, a house divided cannot stand. If the colonist is a Satanist and he brought the church, then obviously the church is satanic. 
Why would the devil bring you churches that are actually representing God? He wouldn't. He never has. He never will. It says in the Bible that all who wish to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So the LGBT community is wrong to mock God, but they're right to mock the churches because they're mocking God. And you can't be serious if you're mocking God. You can't be serious. You can't seriously say you're from God while mocking God. Which one's worse? Beware of the wolves in sheep's clothes because they're worse than the wolf. The church has turned their back on me because I do God's work. There's no other way to look at it. In the name of God, I commanded them many times to rally to me and obey. They will not do that because they worship the European and Israeli and Jewish and LGBT elite and not God Almighty. That's why they will never obey God through me. And after my flesh dies, I don't want to hear a single whisper that sounds even anywhere near like a prayer. Because you people betrayed me to the fucking extreme. To the extreme. And there is no excuse whatsoever for that disgusting refusal to obey God at the most important time in history after how many years, how many hundreds of years as you parade to pretend to be waiting for Jesus to come back, here I am? How many years? How many years did you twist Christ, Christ's characteristics to try to make him seem more like a European wealthy governing class fool? How many years did you spend doing that? How many children were abused? How much of your church money was abused? How many people were led to hell? You are worse than the Pharisees. You make them 10 times the children of hell as you are. And there I was figuratively speaking, to make a long story short, people should be able to look at these people and know that they're misleaders. If you go to church thinking you're serving God, my goodness, you've lost your fucking mind. My goodness. Can you imagine? You think your neo-colonial prayers and your romantic injustice and your privileged marriages are holy? that will be well received by God Almighty? Are you that gone? Are you that much uh, uh, poisoned by the TV ways? Poisoned by ethnocentrism? Poisoned by materialism? Are you all that crazy? You see, I am Christ. There is not a speck in my eye. But there are rainforests and planets in you people's eyes. Flog a mocker and the simple, the morally deficient, those without moral direction will learn to scramble to do the right thing. If they have a brain, so to speak, rebuke the discerning and they will gain knowledge of God if they're discerning. But you people aren't. I'm not here to rebuke you, then magically a magic wand is waved and you can do it yourself. I am not a do-it-yourself kit. I am the king of kings. Not the Catholics, not the Protestants, not the Muslims, not the Jews, not the governments, not the martial art orders. I am. I am that. I am. Not people with technology seeking to hack your brain and sexually enslave you. Not the sex cults like Keith Rainier and Allison Mack. Not the perverted corporate oppressors like Weinstein and Epstein. I am God's representative. Not the Pope. He worships the fucking devil and rebels against me. I don't know him. And if you would listen to Proverbs 3.21, you wouldn't need to ask me why I disapprove of the LGBT community's political movements, and you wouldn't need to ask me whether homosexuality is a sin or not. Proverbs 3.21, my son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you an ornament to grace your neck, so to speak. You wouldn't have to ask me why I point to certain parts of the Bible that make it clear that I'm right. Because just like in the Egyptian mythology, Satan set testifies against himself. And I can use that testimony to convict him with ease. Yes, homosexuality 
is a sin. Thank you.